listeners, and welcome to the Liberty Mike Podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing all right. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what we're sipping on here? Um, this is Santi Malt, I think is how I would say it, maybe something like that. Yeah. Um, it's a bottle of uh, single malt whiskey that my cousin brought me from Switzerland. And yeah. It was finished in old oak beer casks, I guess. Yeah, that's that's what the bottle said. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. um, it's uh it's a woodier whiskey than I usually drink. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely it's definitely got some wood in it. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, like I say, it's Liberty Larry doesn't like it. Yeah, it's I'm, like, not, like, I'm not a big yeah, fan over it. here. I'm not gonna lie. Um, it's it's just it it tastes like scotch to me. Like mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's what. I'm getting from it. Yeah, the um, the process is very similar. Uh, it doesn't have that peat smoke flavor that scotch no. has. That and, and that, I have uh, a that problem most with scotch that. Has. Yeah, um, and I, that's that's one of the reasons I don't like scotch is that. Yeah, and this doesn't like, have that. You um you like the Japanese whiskey though, right? I do. Yeah, it's the same process except for the finish on the yeah. in the beer cask. And the, the finish may be what what I have a problem with on this one. Yeah, it's got yeah. that bitter, like that beer bitter, yeah, flavor in it. Um, I so my experience with it was like when I first when I first had it uh, at Christmas. Um, I was like, okay, yeah, it's, this is a very this is a very oaky flavor that yeah that I could take or leave. Like, yeah. it's not something that I seek out. Yeah. Um, but the, the more I drank it, the more I liked it actually. Like it, it well, grew on me and, and uh, and GI Greg had some with me too. He said the same thing. Yeah. And that may be this, the case with this one. Like, well, you threw the, ice in it though. The, you might've ruined did, it. I did put ice in it. Um, <laughs> I, you know, by the end of the podcast, I may have a different opinion on this drink. I mean, yeah. we'll see. I don't know <laughs> because it's not like, completely awful but it's it's a lot there's a lot going on in there well that that's what's fun about it is that it's got it, kind of a complex flavor and it does oh it has yeah. that it's yeah. not bourbon not everything is bourbon <laughs> i like bourbon <laughs> so, you know malted barley is a real common base for a whiskey like everywhere yeah. else in the world it's, <laughs> it's not all corn and rye and wheat uh-huh. um so yeah, gotta yeah. gotta broaden my horizons i y- guess you do <laughs> yeah. this is uh this is more like what whiskey was at the beginning, yeah. this is the this is the water of life, you know. All this right. is a whiskey beta, the the which is the Gaelic term. I'm probably <laughs> totally butchering that, but it's something like that. But, yeah. but it, it but it means water of life, like that's yeah. what, that's what they called it. Yeah. And of course, we get whiskey from that. Okay. Um, yeah. But water of life. <laughs> water of life. And I don't dispute that part. Yeah. So um, I kind of like it. Uh, it. It's definitely like it's not a bourbon. Yeah. 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 That's and, for sure. and that's, I mean, but there's like, um, there's old bourbons that have like a really heavy oak yeah. flavor though too. Yeah. And you got really young bourbons that's like greenwood flavor that's, yeah. that I'm not a huge fan of. Like yeah. I'd rather have the old stuff than the new stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but oh. the new stuff is cheap and the old stuff is expensive. <laughs> <laughs> right. A little bit of a price difference here. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I, you know, I really appreciate my cousin bringing it over. Yeah. Because uh, I, I certainly wouldn't have had the opportunity to try it otherwise. Yeah. Unless I actually do make it to Switzerland in a few months, which yeah. I hope to, but yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, I haven't started making plans. And, <laughs> that's uh, not, that usually doesn't bode well for the trip happening. <laughs> yeah. I, when I was planning to go like April or May, yeah. um, my, uh, my brother's family is going earlier. Like, I think that they're going over there. I can't remember when they said. It was like end of next month, maybe, though, or beginning of March. Yeah. I was like, I can't do that. Because, <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, initially when I was talking to my cousin about it, he was like, oh, yeah, your brother and his wife are coming over, too. Um, somewhere around in there, too. So maybe you can coordinate and you can all come together. And that would be really that would cool. That would be the way to do it. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that they're going over there like way too early for me. Yeah. I want to hit the spring anyway. I don't want to hit the end of winter. Yeah. <laughs> in Switzerland, I don't. I don't have any interest in going skiing or. Yeah. Anything like that. I want to. I, I want like. I don't know. Your brother don't. Your brother don't need to be on skis anyway. I know about his knee. 
Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he can manage. I bet he could, but he shouldn't. <laughs> uh, I'm sure he could manage. I don't question that. They have all those braces and stuff. He could prepare himself. I don't know. And he's running again. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's all great. I'm just saying. Don't push your luck, buddy. Um, so I was, uh, by way of an introduction, yeah. um, I was talking on the last podcast that we don't get enough interaction from our audience. Yeah. Um, or that's, that's a really bad way of sounding it that we get less interaction than I would like yeah. from our audience. I want, I, I'd like to see a more interactive audience, you know, people that are in, engaged, involved and, you know, Which uh, like I, I want, I want more of a community. I like, I want a real community feel. Yeah. And we've got like, we've got like a very small community feel. There's some people, yeah. um, like my other cousin in Australia and, uh, of course, GI Greg and, yeah. um, you know, Preston ridiculous on YouTube. And you know, there, there <laughs> yeah. are people that, um, that interact with our posts a lot Yeah, and I really appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. And, um, you know, there's people that email me from time to time and I appreciate that too. And, you know, I, I, I like all that stuff and I'd like to see more of it. That's why I'm asking for more of it. Yeah. So, but then you posted a meme last week or <laughs> early this week or whenever. <laughs> some point um that it got some interaction i guess on our page although you know i only log into facebook to yeah. drop the podcast so, it, so you had got, to tell me about this it but. got some interaction on our page but i dropped in a few um liberty groups i'm in and it got a lot of reaction in those groups yeah <laughs> so so why um why don't you tell us about the meme and then what kind of reaction um, was out there yeah i mean it was it was just about the um daryl hammond the football player that got that had the heart attack and basically died on the field um and basically the point of the meme was that you can't that we may not know what happened to him, but we absolutely know what we can't say it was. Mm -hmm. Like, there's absolutely, like, you yeah, can't... Yeah, something like, um, uh, we don't know what happened, but we know it's not what you think. Yeah, <laughs> or something yeah, like exactly. That, right? yeah. yeah, it was something like that. And the point of it was, was you can't even... The point I was trying to make with the meme was that you can't even have the conversation. Like, it's, it's like, completely not okay to even consider that as a thing. And, and I don't know that it had anything to do with it or not. And I kind of err on the side that probably didn't. Yeah. But I don't know. And the fact that we can't even like say something. And the and so the comments in the in the groups that I posted it in, like basically proved my point. Mm -hmm. Is that because all, all the people that were up in arms about it were basically saying, well, you don't know. Well, no, I don't know. But yeah, the, the fact that we can't even have the conversation is a problem. And it was kind of disappointing in some libertarian groups to have that type of reaction. <laughs> yeah. I um I, I only read a dozen or so of the responses or the the comments and uh but the one that I liked the best was well, we know it was definitely either climate change or that terrible bastard Putin or something like <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, right. <laughs> which I, I thought was really funny. Uh, that was a good response. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, mean, there was a lot of good responses. Yeah, there were I I the ones that I looked at, like the vast majority of them were yeah. Um, jokes responses that that I could get behind. Yeah. Yeah. One way or another, either jokes like that or yeah. um, commenting on uh, the suppression of information. Yeah. And then there were some that were way out of line with that. Yeah. Like one of them was something about um, crazy libertarians, uh, you know, screaming into the void about the jab while your family and friends is trying to distance themselves from your crazy ass or something like that. Yeah. Well, and I was like, wow, that's interesting. Yeah. There's, <laughs> like, and anytime you go there, you have a comment section with something that like this, um, yeah. you, people immediately almost go to personal attacks. And there were a couple of personal attacks against the page. Like, not like, I mean, I say personal attacks, but you know, oh, you've got liberty in the name of your thing and blah, 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 that kind mm -hmm. of thing. And it's like, man, like, it's just a joke, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I started really digging into this. Like I, I went down a rabbit hole on this, on yeah. this thing. Um, because I, like, I am interested in the aspect of it, of like, uh, the way it's being presented that we don't have enough data to know the cause, but we know certainly what it's not. What it's not. Yeah. Um, which doesn't make any sense. It's not very scientific. Yeah. It, to rule something out without data one way or the other. Yeah. And I don't think that it's unreasonable to ask the question. 
Well, that's and that's my whole thing because mm-hmm. I mean I don't like I said I don't know one way or the other. I don't know that we'll ever know one way or the other. But I know this: if it starts happening more and more, mm-hmm. what have we changed in the past couple of years? Yeah, and I don't know that it will happen more and more. And I hope it don't. Um, but yeah, it's uh, okay. Well, uh, let's get into some data though. Okay. All right. I, like I'm not sure what order to address this honestly, yeah. and um. And I, I it's have, always good to start with data. I, I have from a there. Uh, yeah. I have a I have several clips from Fauci's appearance on the takeout, the takedown, the ta- I don't know whatever that CBS show with Major something or other. Major Garrett. Major Garrett. <laughs> yeah. Because um, they threw Fauci out to to yeah, to do his thing with this. Yeah. Well, and other things too, I guess. But well, I um, thought he retired. I thought we were done with this man. Hey, once you're part of the system, you're always <laughs> part of the system. Right? Um, so, but I, I started looking through data because I, I remember some events of uh, like strange uh, cardiac events and so forth. I was a basketball player uh, growing up. Um, I'm not very tall, so that may be a surprise. But, uh, mm-hmm. but I, yeah. But um, you were pretty good. I, I was I was pretty good. I played um, with you. You're definitely you're way better than me. <laughs> yeah, I, I played all through high school, and I got recruited Division three college, which isn't really that big a deal. But yeah. I, I was only looking at Division three schools. So I, <laughs> if you had had my height, you would have probably been able to do so. You're like an inch taller than me, <laughs> and it's a big inch. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, um, and uh, the the one I remember was Hank Gathers. Okay. So Hank Gathers was a big deal, and um, he he died uh, March of 1990. I was, let's see, was I in high school at that point? I, I, that might have been my eighth grade year. I can't remember. Now, I graduated in 95, so that must have been seventh or eighth grade. Anyway, um, and he he collapsed on the court, and, uh, and then he later died. But it, it turned out that he had a... Um, and not uh, a, a not terribly unusual um, heart defect, congenital heart defect, like born with heart defect, yeah. um, called a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, uh, where the wall around one of his ventricles was um, was so thick that it didn't really allow efficient pumping of blood to the rest of the body. Yeah. Right? Um, and this is actually, I, I think this is the most common cause of young athletes dying on the court. Oh, really? Yeah. Or I say on the court, but, but like in, during, in, during yeah. the game. Yeah. During, during exercising or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, so I started reading about, you know, the, the frequency of college athletes, um, dying while engaged in their sports. Yeah. And, uh, the, the first number that I came across was that it, it's about one in 200,000. Wow. Um, and, but that's debatable because the, the way they're doing these studies is they're sifting through media, like news reports and so forth. Oh, like it's yeah. not recorded so if it's not centrally. Like, yeah. um, but so I adjusted because they said they probably miss about half of them, but that yeah. would still make it one in a hundred thousand. Yeah. Which isn't very common. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and almost all of them showed some previous signs that there was a problem like um, losing consciousness while engaged in physical activity well, and that's beforehand. And- something I've wondered, like with athletes, particularly like the NFL in particular, like do they not do some kind of... They do extensive screening. I would think so. Yeah, and all the professional sports, they do extensive screening. Yeah. Um, they didn't At the time the Hank Gathers died, they didn't do a lot of screening in college, but I think that most, at least Division One schools do now. Yeah. Um, and then it was actually far more common, like as you move down, down the divisions, it's less common for athletes to die while engaged in their activity. So the highest frequency is at division one. It's less at division two, less at division three. Um, and the idea is that like the intensity of the exercise is higher at the higher levels. They spend more time doing it. They're, you know, you know, um, but, (laughs) and That's probably another thing that I found really interesting about it is that um, by far the most frequent occurrences are in basketball players. Yeah. And there were a whole bunch of, like, there was a whole lot of reasons given as to why that might be. Um, Mostly it's about that it's uh, it's start-stop 
Um, but unlike soccer where there's a lot of like, you know, jogging and half halfway moving down the field and so forth in basketball, shorter it's court. It, well, it's a shorter court. And, um, but the main thing is that you're going from full out to stop, full out to stop, full out to stop over and over and over again. Yeah. Um, and so there's this, uh, it, it pushes your heart rate up and then your heart rate gets to drop and then it pushes your heart rate up again and then your heart rate gets to drop and, and yeah. it, you're doing this constantly throughout the it throughout the game messes with you um and i was gonna say uh you know as far as them showing some signs before hank gathers had hank gathers was aware that he had a dysrhythmia yeah uh and he had been taking some medicine and there's some evidence that he stopped taking the medicine because he thought it affected his performance and mm. things like that too yeah so um then uh i i went to some other sources and i found a um a 2004 study by eckhart um, where they were uh, going through military recruits. And the military, of course, keeps much more careful records about what happens They're to people. They're enlistees, yeah. yeah. Um, and so it was, you know, male and female exercisers, you know, like people that you expect to be in reasonably good shape, um, aged 18 to 35. And the frequency was surprising, uh, that they had something like 1 in 15,000 um, uh, experienced a sudden cardiac arrest. Really? And... Then as far as the screening is concerned, it may not matter because the military showed that the even with um, uh, EKG and ECG screening, it didn't seem to affect the rate at which this happened. Yeah. And one of 15,000 is actually a lot more than I would have would've would've expected. Yeah. Um, so the idea that it may have been some, you know... Like there's definitely a lot of reason to believe that there that there was something natural that caused this. That happened, yeah. Yeah, in the case of this guy Hamlin. Yeah, I think so. All right, <laughs> Daryl Dar- Hamlin. I, I sure. Demar, I think. Demar, Demar Hamlin. Yeah. yeah. As much as I've heard that name, you think I'd remember it? <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. Um, and so, you know what they've been talking about those uh, Commodia Cordis, and I, yeah. I guess I want to. I want to get into Fauci's thing first, and then we can we can address like we can um, address their most their most used excuse for this. <laughs> All right. I guess, uh, and I'm not sure where to start with this. I, I think we just start with the question, right? Where Fauci is asked about this particular event, and um, well, okay. Actually, no, you know what? Here's where we're going to start. We're going to start with them asking the question that really matters. Okay. Um, which is where Fauci is actually asked about, well, you know, there is, and this is an amazing concession from the media, I think, at this point, um, that there have been cardiac events that seem to be related, maybe possibly, to the vaccine, yeah. um, which is, you know, this uh, may be a reason that people might be asking the question about whether the vaccine contributed to this disaster in the NFL. Yeah. And, um, so let's, let's start with that because that's kind of a, this is a, as close to an antagonistic media event that Fauci has ever <laughs> had to deal with as far as I know. Yeah. So here we go. All right. Shred of evidence. Myocarditis was related to vaccines. It is a heart issue. I'm not a doctor. You are. That's a shred of evidence. A very small shred. Right. What? And And explain how then this can get conflated. Of course. In a very, very rare case, some of the mRNA vaccines can cause a self-limiting, almost invariably benign, inflammatory response in the heart, which generally resolves in a very short period of time. It is very, very rare. When you compare that with the negative effects on the heart by myocarditis or pericarditis, which is inflammation of either the heart muscle or the covering of the heart, and heart failure and heart medical problems, overwhelmingly COVID itself causes that in a dramatically higher rate than the relatively benign, mild myocarditis that you might have with a vaccine, which is very, very rare. So (laughs) I guess first to address the the idea of the um, COVID itself itself having a dramatically higher rate of cardiac events than um, the vaccine. Yeah. um, That's debatable. 
Well, okay. So that's debatable at best. But even if you grant that premise, okay, that would be an argument if the vaccine prevented you from getting the infection. Yeah. Well, that's kind of where I was going to go. Like the so you're talking about a situation where I'm going to get this vaccine and increase my by what that, even if it is mild increase, mm-hmm. uh, my my chances of myocarditis. 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 Yeah. So I'm going to increase my chances with the vaccine and I'm still probably going to get COVID and increases my chances again. Like, so how much am I going to increase my chances of having heart problems here by, by doing both? Yeah. When I could just do one, I could just get COVID. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I mean, that's not exactly how it works. Like it doesn't, it's not a compounding effect. I don't think, but okay. Well, um, I mean, maybe it's not, I'm just saying, but, but the argument is there though, that if you have a, um, a chance of getting myocarditis from getting the, the from getting covid yeah um and you have a chance of getting myocarditis from getting the vaccine mm. um then and the vaccine doesn't prevent you from getting covid yeah that by getting the vaccine all you've done is increase your chances of getting myocarditis yeah because even if get, it's not cumulative <laughs> yeah um because you know you may or may not get covid and, and if you do you have a chance of getting myocarditis. Yeah. But if you get the vaccine, you definitely have a chance of getting myocarditis, <laughs> right. um, whether you get COVID or not. And if you get COVID too, like, and you, and you can still get COVID. Yeah, exactly. And as far as I can tell, there's not even any evidence that says that you're less likely to get COVID if you get the vaccine. Yeah, they've abandoned all of that. Like, <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, that, the media straight tells you, like, expect to get COVID basically now. Yeah. I mean. So you have a chance of getting COVID no matter what. Yeah. Which gives you a chance of getting myocarditis. And if you get the vaccine, you just guaranteed yourself a chance of getting myocarditis. Yeah. So the argument doesn't hold yeah. um, anyway. And then, like I said, there I, I think that there was like a study, and I didn't have time to really dig into this. I think there was a study that suggested that cardiac events were more likely um, with COVID than with the vaccine. Um, but there's been studies that have come out since then that are questioning that data. So especially his, you have a dramatically higher chance. That's, that's just a lie. That's overstated. Yeah. 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 That's just a lie. He knows he knows better. Yeah. Well, um, and that's something you have to remember with him is is that you're right. He does know better. Mm-hmm. Like it's not just an exaggeration or whatever with him. Like he knows what he's doing. Yeah. Um and and just that in general is something that, like I'm not going to play the clip again cuz it was a minute and, t- and 11 seconds. Yeah. Um so you you had 71 seconds of him there and I'm not going to make you listen to it again. But I'm not going to make you listen to it again, <laughs> but I recommend that you go back and listen to it again, bearing this in mind, because yeah. these are some phrases that he uses in order during that 71 second clip uh-huh. that he's not even the one talking the whole time. Yeah. He says, it's a very small shred of evidence that there's a very, very rare chance of this, of a self-limiting, almost invariably benign issue that resolves itself in a short time that it's very, very rare, we reiterate, (laughs) that it's relatively benign and mild, we reiterate, and that it's very, very rare a third time. Yeah, we gotta gotta make sure we hammer that one home, right? In 71 seconds, he said very, very rare three times. He said that it was a relatively benign or mild twice. Um, He said that it is actually almost invariably benign, which is, okay, whatever. Um, that it's self-limiting, that it, uh, resolves itself. Like, okay. And I, I want you to, after you go back and listen to that clip again, Yeah. I want you to now listen to this clip and compare the language. All right. When, if you look at the film, it's clear that he had a very big, strong person's shoulder go into his chest, which clearly can cause a traumatic injury to the heart. Now, in that 13-second clip, he said clearly twice. Yeah. It's very clear. Very clear. Very clear that this is a, a, a potential for injury, that a very strong man hit him in the chest with his shoulder, which happens on every play in the NFL I was fixing much. to say, like, that, that whole argument I have a real problem with because I watch a lot of NFL football, and mm-hmm. that is as routine of a play as you get. 
Yeah, it didn't seem like a bad hit to me. No, no. I mean, you see guys get their clock clean that don't have. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm just saying, like, and I get that, you know, it could. I'm just all I'm saying is, is that was a very routine hit in the NFL. Yeah. Now, um, the particular uh, medical issue that they've been citing over and over again, which he seems to be kind of implying there, is called a commodia cordis. Okay. Um, and it is a. a very rare, yeah. very, very rare. I'm yeah. sorry, I should use his language. <laughs> yeah. A very, very rare event where if you hit somebody in the chest at just the right moment, um, essentially at the uh, the top of the electrical activity of the heart when it's going to reset, yeah. um, that it won't fire the next signal. Yeah. Uh, well, not it won't fire. It's not that it won't fire the next signal. It won't fire the next signal from where it's supposed to originate, and it results in um, your heart stopping. Ventricular tachycardia, where where yeah. your your ventricles, which is the the lower part of your heart that actually pushes the blood both around to the to the lungs to pick up oxygen, and then the left ventricle pushes the blood around to the rest of the body, yeah. um, where they're just kind of fluttering and they're not moving any fluid. Gotcha. Okay. So, um, I. <laughs> Which I, I understand this is pretty common and like, or not, com- it's not common, but mm-hmm. this happens in baseball and softball and that type of thing, from what I understand. Yes, uh, well, that's Hardball correct. sports is, was the term I heard used. Mostly. Um, so uh, I started with Wikipedia, which has a chart right up at the top of um, uh, sudden cardiac deaths in athlete in young athletes. Yeah. Um, under 35. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it shows that the actually the the thing that um, Hank Gathers died from the uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy as being roughly a quarter of the 387 cases. Now they didn't say over what period of time this 387 cases happened either, so I have no yeah. idea. Yeah. But um, the next the next thing down was 20 percent of the cases it turned out to be uh, 77 of them, I believe. Um, 77 of the 387 cases was Commodia cordis. Yeah. Um, so you get the impression though, from all this, that it's like, you know, most of these studies are 18 to 35. This particular chart says under 35, you, you're thinking older athletes, but the average age of person, um, suffering commodia cordis was 13. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. Um, because they have more compliant chest wall at that point. They're not fully um, developed. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, the idea is that it transmits the the force through to the heart uh, more readily than a, an adult. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, but in order for the average young athlete dying from Commodia Cordis to be 13, like, there can't have been very many people in their upper teens and certainly their 20s and 30s. Yeah. Right? Like, maybe one. <laughs> yeah. And... So this is exceedingly rare in yeah. adults. Yeah. And um, the most common cause is hitting the chest with a baseball or yeah. a hockey puck. Or, yeah, hockey puck. Um, lacrosse was, was the other one that came up. Yeah. Um, and then a very rarely fighting sports like karate. It, you just know, get that, kicked in the chest. Just that, yeah. that lucky kick. punch or kick that happened yeah. at just the right moment. Yeah. Um, and what I found interesting is that in, – so I had – this is, I have moved beyond uh, Wikipedia at this point. I was reading a New England Journal of Medicine yeah. um, article about this. And um, what I found really interesting in the, the uh, article was that when they were identifying the most common causes of this, they said, or high-speed collisions like when two outfielders run into each other chasing, for, chasing a ball. Really? Now, the reason I found that particularly interesting is because they said high-speed collisions – like two outfielders. They didn't say like tackles in football. Yeah. Which you would think if that was something that had come up at all, that would be your That would be. Well, and football is different because, I mean, there's a lot of rough, hard hits in football, but they're mm-hmm. also wearing so much pads yeah. and whatnot. Like, I mean, these guys are padded up. Yeah. The chest protection that they have in football now is, is insane. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, like, the suggestion that this is, that it's very clear that this is a more likely cause is just fallacious um and i I find it really interesting that the cause that they don't want you to think about is very very rare um 
almost invariably benign, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And this is, it's very clear that this could have caused it when this event is actually far more rare than the one that they're talking about. Because yeah. studies now are coming out whether reevaluating the data on vaccines um, that are suggesting something like 1,200 and, uh, out of every million people have some kind of adverse, serious adverse event. Um, and that wow. sounds like a really, it sounds like a small number, 1,200 in a million people. But that's yeah, one but in 800. That's less than one in 1,000. I was going to say, yeah. I mean, I don't... Or, the, I'm sorry, more than one in 1,000. It's yeah, one in 800. Them are odds I ain't wanting to play. Yeah, I mean, it's 0.012. Yeah. Um, I mean, you start getting into like, I mean, how many people do you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, you know. And just as a side note, they pulled vaccines off the market with far lower, far yeah. lower, like orders of magnitude lower um, adverse event uh, rates. Yeah. So... Anyway, the, this, I, I guess I'm just trying to point out here that the, what they're trying to suggest to you is the more likely cause is actually statistically a less likely cause. Yeah. yeah. And that's not to say that the vaccine caused it. I have no idea. No. Um, I'm just frustrated with the way that this is being portrayed by the media, the, the question that you're not supposed to ask. And, um, and that's why this clip from that same interview is really interesting to me. And I want to go ahead and play that one. All right, let's hear it. Before people on Twitter began to say, well, clearly the vaccine caused his seizure. And that had a multiplier effect on Twitter, as these things tend to do. What's your reaction to that? Well, my reaction is one of concern about... Isn't it horror? Borderline? More than concern? Yeah, it, it's horror that misinformation and disinformation... There's no reason to continue playing past that. It's not like he gives any data or anything. He just complains about misinformation and disinformation. Um, but so I, I hear that and I see this cue from the interviewer. Besides the interviewer's style drives me crazy. Yeah. I almost tried to like I tried to leave these clips alone as much as I could. Um like not edit them too it's much. It's really tempting not to edit out those pauses. Though. Yeah, the the <laughs> dramatic pauses and the uh, and the way he asks the, what's your reaction to that? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's so dramatic. Um, but the the interesting part, and the, they pointed this out on no agenda. Now I had kind of a different take from what they said, but uh, so my reaction to that was like, well. Fauci said he was concerned and that wasn't nearly as strong a term. That wasn't as sensationalistic a term as they wanted. And so he directed him to the right term. Horror, you know, horror, it's gotta be yeah. horror. Yeah. Um, on no agenda, they were suggesting that he went off script. Yeah. That he forgot his line. He, he missed the line. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so uh, he was corrected by the interviewer yeah. to the line he was supposed to say. Yeah. Um, that's, pretty cynical but it wouldn't surprise it me wouldn't, no absolutely it wouldn't i mean <laughs> given what you're dealing with here and so um I, something that i want to point out here is that what i've tried to do so far is provide some data to give you context on this yeah and um major whatever his name is uh garrett yeah. Right. Okay. Um, Major Garrett asks Fauci towards the end of the in of this section of the interview. Man, and I like really fell in on this interview. Like this is a this was an hour interview or something like that. Oh, Forty five wow. minutes an hour. That much of that? Uh, I skipped through some places because I just couldn't stand it anymore. Uh, we could have <laughs> easily done an entire episode just on this interview of Fauci, like tearing apart yeah. all the stuff he had to say. Yeah. Uh, like why people still anyway. Anyway, um, so. Major Garrett asks him a very clear question um, about this, uh, you know, about the science of this. And I just want to play this to to contrast with what we're trying to do here. Right. I, and I'm drawing your attention to the contrast before we even play it. But, of course, we'll talk about it afterwards. All right. But what are your thoughts about what has been said in this space about COVID that you believe scientifically, medically is untrue and the damage it's done? Well, disinformation in any arena is not a good thing. It can lead to negative consequences. So you can never say it's a positive value added phenomenon. When it leads to a situation where people do not make use of an intervention that could potentially 
prevent them from suffering, prevent them from being hospitalized, and prevent them from dying. To me, that's horrible. More horror. <laughs> yeah. Um, f funny. It's funny to me that the uh, a, a phrase that he used in that that really stuck out to me was value added, which is some BS corporate lingo yeah. um, that like has no place in a scientific discussion at all. And, um, but I don't know exactly what it says. I haven't really spent time thinking about what that says about Fauci that he uses that, that <laughs> phrase in there, but it, I, I think it says something. Yeah. <laughs> There's something important in there. Like he's a yeah. pitch man, yeah. not a scientist. Yeah. And, um, but the main thing that I wanted to point out there was there are dozens of crazy misinformation, disinformation theories out there in in the public space. <laughs> that he could have he could have used. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what was the one that you were telling me before the podcast? <laughs> yeah. That yeah. That the vaccination was um, in preparation for the aliens coming. Like they needed to vaccinate <laughs> the population because they're going to bring some disease. <laughs> like I don't know. I mean, there's some crazy stuff I think out said there. Something man. about alien DNA in it. Yeah. Or I, I don't, uh, maybe I don't remember. <laughs> I mean, there's some crazy stuff out there. Is yeah. The point I'm making that they're they're magnetic. That there's metal filings in them. Yeah. And, you know that it was an injection of nanobots. And like, there's all kinds of stuff that he could have, he could have used yeah. as an example of the ridiculous misinformation, disinformation out there. Yeah. But he gives not one, not one example when yeah. asked directly, what information out there of misinformation or disinformation do you think has been most damaging? Yeah. He won't give an example. He doesn't give a single example. He completely evades the question. And I, I think that the reason is because... There's nothing he can say that he said before that hasn't turned out to actually be true. <laughs> well, what I, what I take that is, that means all of it's true. <laughs> oh, yeah, <come> on. <laughs> there is alien DNA in those vaccines. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> in those vaccines. Yeah. Um, so, but, you know, I just find it interesting that from the standpoint of a scientist and a physician, and, and I was thinking about this the other day, too, as I was listening to this interview, and I was getting really frustrated listening to the interview. Yeah. And I thought, what a strange world that we live in that I can say absolutely truthfully that I have treated more patients yeah. than Dr. Fauci has. Yeah. <laughs> and I have killed fewer <laughs> yeah, I, than I, Dr. I, Fauci has. Uh, I mean, like, that's a completely true statement. Yeah. I probably, I, well, actually, I know. I treated more patients on my first day as an EMT than Fauci did in his entire career. Yeah. And I, I, I think it's not unreasonable to ask the question is if, if I killed fewer patients in my entire career than he did on his first day. But <laughs> right. I don't know about that one. Yeah. Um, but the rest of it I'm sure of. Yeah. And it's amazing to me that this guy is looked to as the paragon of science. Yeah, he's Mr. And science. And health information. Yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah, nobody's listening to me on this. Well, a few of you are. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> yeah. that. Oh, no, but, we've got a little following. Come on now. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's frustrating. It, it's frustrating to listen to. I can't believe that anybody's still listening to this guy at this point. Yeah. And I can't, oh, I can't even describe this man. Like he's the most horrible man. I was like trying to think of a word that I can, that I can use on the podcast, yeah. um, the, to describe him. And I couldn't come up with one. And I like, he's just, he's a pompous, duplicitous, underhanded, sneaky rat bastard. Yeah. That's he's the best I could do. He's, he's a propagandist. And I, I mean, that's, that's, that's what yeah. he is. He's bought and paid for by pharma. And I mean, this is what you get. Yeah. You know? Well, now he's retired. Well, I mean, you say that, but let, He's still yeah. on the TV. Once in the system, always in the system. Yep, yep. Um, and and he is a part. You know, when we talk about the deep state, and I, I hate to turn this late. This isn't supposed to be um, conspiracy stuff. Like, yeah. but when I mean, it's to illustrate how not conspiracy it is. Actually, I think yeah. um, when we talk about the deep state, people like him are who we're talking about. Yeah. These unelected bureaucrats yeah. that that form policy. Of course, he'll still 
sit up there on the TV, look you right, look right into the camera and say that he never recommended lockdowns. Yeah. <laughs> Even though we have him on video over and over again. <laughs> yes, yeah. Right? I mean, he just has no, um, the guy who uh, developed the uh, PCR test said that it, that was one of his complaints. We pay, played a clip long ago. Yeah. I wonder if I actually, we can probably find it again. We'll play it here if, if we can. Yeah. Um, but, uh, saying that the, you know, Fauci has no qualms about sitting right and looking you right in the eye, the people that are supposed to be trusting him and lying to your face. Yeah. Yeah. What is it? What, what is it about humanity that, 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 that wants to go to the, all the details and stuff and listen, you know, these guys like Fauci get up there and start talking, you know, he doesn't know anything really about anything. And I'd say that to his face, nothing. The man thinks you can take a blood sample and stick it in an electron microscope, and if it's got a virus in there, you'll know it. He doesn't understand electron microscopy, and he doesn't understand medicine. And he, doesn't, he should not be in a position like he's in. Most of those guys up there on the top are just total administrative people, and they don't know anything about what's going on at the bottom. You know, those guys have got an agenda, which is not what we would like them to have, being that we pay for them to take care of our health in some way. They've got a personal kind of agenda. They make up their own rules as they go. They change them when they want to. And they smugly, like Tony Fauci, does not mind going on television in front of the people that pay his salary and lie directly into the camera. I mean, that's who you're dealing with. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we, we we spent... This was... We had different plans for this podcast, but I really got stuck in this <laughs> This stuff. wasn't what I came over to talk about. <laughs> no. <laughs> Which it's fine. Um... Well, we can just call back a little bit to the last podcast, uh, I suppose. Uh, of course, the night that we said that they still hadn't found a speaker, they finally decided uh, on a speaker. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, this isn't really that interesting to me, except <laughs> that they wouldn't let people leave until they'd finally made a decision well after midnight Friday, so Saturday morning. Yeah. Um, wouldn't let these congressmen start their weekend, made them stay until whatever time, two, three in the morning, whenever it was that they finally came to a vote. And I find this really interesting that they that they feel like that is an issue that's important enough for them to stay over and and come to a decision on. Absolutely. Not things like dealing with homelessness or the opioid crisis. Yeah. Or even terrorism in the world. Immigration. Or, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> things that affect, you know, us. Everybody. The, the real people <laughs> that they're supposed to be representing up there. Yeah. They uh, would never put that kind of time. They would be like, no, we're not eating into my weekend to deal with this. Yeah. But in order to appoint a speaker, they, they'll... Go through the night. Yep. On the weekend. Yep. Um, and that's just kind of unreal to me. Well. Yeah. Well, now that now and I can't remember the guy's name, but now that you're now that we have a speaker, the McCarthy. guy McCarthy, McCarthy, yeah, no, but the the guy that lied, done all the oh, lying, <laughs> yeah, uh, George Santos, yes, um, he's <laughs> back in the news again. Now that we have a speaker, all of a sudden, I heard like three reports on him yesterday, mm -hmm. um, talking about you know they're the they're they're not going to lay him on any committees, and they're mm -hmm. they're calling for him to resign, and his own party's calling for him to resign. Yeah, and and a bunch of politicians just it was really interesting listening to him talk after uh, after the podcast we had where we talked about you know the the important lies versus mm -hmm. the lies that he told. Yeah, I thought of an even more important one afterwards too. Yeah, um, that every single one of those guys not only lie about this. But they actually take an oath when they take office yeah. to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States of America. Yeah. And they break that thing every single day. Every time. Yeah. Every time they meet. <laughs> yep. Every time they meet. Yeah. Um, and that is a far more important lie yeah. to me than him lying about where he went to school. Yeah. But it was, or even whether he's gay or Jewish or whatever, whatever. I don't care. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like his demographics do not concern me. Yeah, it was interesting though listening to him whine about it. Yeah, so. I'm sure it was. Uh so <laughs> so the topic we had planned to talk about. Yeah. Um, on our local libertarian Twitter page, uh, there was a post something about, um. UBI, yes, we want it now, or something like that. I, can, I don't know exactly what it says, because I'm not on Twitter anymore. I'm not, but I'm not on Twitter either, so I didn't actually see the post. This is what I was told. 
And uh, so I thought that we would explain why libertarians would want UBI. Okay. That's a, that's a interesting conversation. Yeah. Um, so the argument from the, from the libertarian side of, for UBI is that it would be a replacement, like in lieu of the existing welfare system yeah. and subsidy system. Um, so instead of having, you know, dozens or hundreds at this point of little departments all making decisions about various people getting benefits for various things, um, that all of that would be completely abolished and everybody would just get the same thing. Yeah. Like everybody would get a, a, uh, you know, a salary that you could get by on essentially for doing nothing. Yeah. And, um, but that, that would, that that would streamline and shrink government doing it that way than the way we do it now. Yeah. So it would be a move in the right direction to just go to a UBI and abolish all the rest of this stuff where you don't have all these little government bureaucrats all looking over various paperwork, all making decisions independently, all manning these hundreds of departments that that's what they do. Yeah. Right. You would just have one and you wouldn't even really need many people. You just want to need a few people, I guess, to, to cut the checks. Well, to cut the checks and to make sure that you're not um, that the people are real. Mm, that, that would be important, <laughs> right? Because yeah. you know, I mean, we all do that with the voting, though. So no, why would no. we? <laughs> why would we be concerned about fraud with our welfare? Exactly. I mean, we're not concerned about it now, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's plenty of fraud in welfare now, and there would almost certainly be plenty of fraud in a UBI as well, where yeah. you were cutting checks to people that didn't exist, and so people would be cashing two checks, and yeah. you know, whatever. Um. So that that's the that's the main argument for it is that it would it it would be it would be moving in the right direction and it would um, reduce the size and cost of government to go to a UBI system instead of our incredibly complicated welfare and subsidy system that exists now. Yeah, and the biggest problem I have, I mean, I have a lot of problems with it actually, but one of them that just off the top that comes to my mind is, so traditionally people who collect like welfare and these these different things, um just aren't that good with their money in general. So instead of like, so at least when they, you issue somebody an EBT card, like they have to go buy food with it. Like you, they can't just like, you know, go buy drugs or alcohol or whatever mm -hmm. they want. They have to go buy food. Um, and so just issuing them, everybody a check, these people who are already in the position they're in because they're not good with their money are just going to be stuck starving by the end of the month before their next check comes in. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. I mean, I guess as a libertarian, you know, that's, that's their life. They can live it how they want. Mm -hmm. But I, I mean, mean it's not like you would get rid of private charity either though. Well, no. Still, I mean, um, there, you know, the argument I always make about that is that there's always somebody willing to help. Yeah. Um, but the point I'm just kind of making is, I mean, it's kind of, to me, it's almost the difference between seeing a person on the street and, giving them some money versus giving them a hamburger. Yeah. Like, no, I, un I understand your point there. Yeah. Um, well, that's where a uh, central bank digital currency comes in, where they can earmark the money that they're putting into your account so that it can <laughs> only be used for certain things. Well, there you go. I mean, that's coming probably either way. So <laughs> Yeah. Well, let's hope not. Uh, I, oh, I hope not. That but. That's a hill to die on out there, everybody. We'll, we'll spend yeah. more time on that sometime. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, stand up against the central bank digital currencies. We don't want. Yeah, we don't no want part that. of that. Yeah. Uh, the other, um, the other primary argument is that uh, it, it's another. It will reduce costs. Yeah. Streamline government thing, um, which is that uh, the majority of crime, um, particularly violent crime, is committed by uh, people that are impoverished. Yeah. Um, and so if you gave them the money they needed to live on, they would be less likely to commit crimes and that you could therefore reduce, uh, you know, police forces or just spend less money dealing with those kind of petty thefts and so forth that, yeah. um, that are engaged in by impoverished uh, I mean, if you want to, if you want to reduce the police force, legalizing drugs would be a quick way to do it. You yeah. Do all of those things through legalizing the drugs. Yeah. And then those people could, uh, could actually declare their earnings too. And they yeah, wouldn't even right? need them. Yeah. <laughs> um, so those are the two main reasons that, uh, that I, I will probably specify men, libertarians 
yeah. would recommend uh, UBI. Yeah. Um, now, the the kind of nuance that's involved in that uh, cannot be relayed in a Twitter post, unfortunately. <laughs> As learned by <laughs> the person managing our Twitter account. <laughs> yeah. Um, not anymore. <laughs> not, no, yeah. Formally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so there, there are a bunch of problems with that. I don't subscribe to either of those arguments. Now, I actually, I do agree that like in lieu of the current welfare system, it if would it be was better. A, if it was a choice between the two, which one you would, you'd pick the UBI. Yeah. What we have now versus UBI. Yeah. The, the barely libertarian Milton Friedman, that was essentially the argument that he made. Yeah. Um, now I will echo Milton Friedman and say, uh, there's nothing so permanent as a temporary government program. Yeah. So I would suggest that a UBI would not replace all those things. It would be in addition to. In addition to, absolutely. But it still creates the same problems that um, various benefits create right now, uh, which is the the difference between, like, so. There's a reason that when you go to the lake or places, they tell you not to feed the animals. <laughs> right. <laughs> they become I mean, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, that, that's actually, like, a really good <laughs> metaphor. Um but uh, the, you know, it does, I don't know, it, it, it solves a little bit of these problems because like one of the big issues with unemployment as an example yeah, is that if you're getting 300 and something, we'll say you're getting $300 a week yeah. unemployment, um, you find a job, a full-time job that'll pay you $400 a week. Yeah. Well, you can either work zero hours and get $300 a week or 40 hours and get $400 a week. So you're working 40 hours for $100 a extra yeah or you can just keep the unemployment go get a cash job well, and <laughs> le leaving that out <laughs> leaving that out there's yeah. no we're trying to simplify we're okay. reducing variables here <laughs> all right um so then essentially what you're talking about is that the the they're only they're working 40 hours a week for only an extra hundred dollars yeah and that calculates into like why would you work 40 hours a week for a hundred dollars now the upside of the ubi is like you get this flat amount yeah. And whatever you work is in addition to that. So it doesn't reduce your benefit to work. Yeah. I mean, that's fair. But you still have the same problem where, um, say, you're getting $1,000 a month UBI and you find a job for 40 hours a week um, that gives you another $1,000 a month. Yeah. Well, you, you know, you just increased your workload tremendously to only double your income. Yeah. Right. So it still calculates into people like the needing, equation. needing a lot more to be worth it to them to, to put time in. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, of course, another problem is like, where does this money come from? Well, that's the big question considering we're a destitute nation. <laughs> yeah. Since we're $33 trillion <laughs> in debt now or something like 33. that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, so people have to be taxed to pay this thing. Yeah. I'm like, there's always people that want to work. I mean, like, there's always going to be people oh, yeah. that want to be productive. Oh, absolutely. Um, well, and, there's people that want to be above the fray. Like, they want to be the top end. And there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. No, know? absolutely not. Like, well, self-interest kind of people... is not a vice. Yeah, exactly. Right? Um, it, it's, and in fact, I would say it's a virtue uh, in, in a lot of ways. Um, there are extremes like everything in moderation. Right. But yeah. the, um, yeah. So there are always going to be people that want to work, that want to produce, that, that want to do well. The question that I have is, do you want a society that penalizes that? Yeah. Yeah. Because that's essentially what like taxing people that are productive would do. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So you pay people that aren't productive and you tax people that are, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Like it, it, I mean, it, it makes sense in this weird way, I suppose, but it's not, it doesn't, um, it, it doesn't, uh, I guess, contribute or enforce or reiterate the kind of um, ethic that we want in people. Yeah. At least that I want in people. And I yeah. think that that would, I think that that sentiment is generally true. Yeah, but we, we live in a society that more and more is just, disinterested in work. Yeah, that's definitely true. I mean, it's it's just the reality of what we live in today. Um, yeah, everybody thinks that they're owed. Yeah. Just for being there, I guess. Uh, 
And while I can sympathize to some degree, you're not. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, no, I don't no, know what else so, to say yeah. about that. Yeah. Um, in, in terms of the, um, the law enforcement aspect of the law enforcement argument, yeah. difference in wealth is what creates that. Like, yeah, uh, but that's the idea, right? Is to make everyone at least a minimum amount wealthy. Well, yeah, but not <laughs> wealthy, like enough to get by is the idea. Yeah. Um, that you can feed yourself and clothe yourself and, and, and get medical care or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm not sure what their numbers would end up being, but the, the thing is that no matter how much you have, it's never enough. People are envious of people that have more. Yeah. Yeah. And people are not because of this, this entitlement idea. Yeah. Um, people are not interested in looking at themselves and trying to determine why it is that they have less. Yeah. They just don't think it's fair. Yeah. Yeah. I, as far as the law enforcement end of it, like I just don't see their UBI changing much there. I agree. Um, I, I just, I don't, I don't see, it. I mean, and this is coming from somebody who thinks we need drastic law enforcement reform. Oh like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like not just law enforcement. I mean, it, it's, that too, but we need drastic law reform. Yeah, to me, it's mostly courts. Courts yeah. are the are the where I. Uh, I mean, it's all there, it's all interrelated. There's so but, many problems. Like to try to unwind it is just yeah, it's all interrelated. But I think the the to me the biggest issue is that the courts benefit the state, not victims. Yeah, you know the kind of no matter what happens the the victim continues to lose. The winners are only the attorneys in the state, no matter what. Yeah. And, um, that's a, that's a system that is broken. It doesn't provide justice. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, um, so I, I think that that's kind of the root of your problem there. Of course, I, I think privatizing law enforcement would be a tremendous improvement because then people would be more likely to be held accountable. Yeah. Um, I mean, there I'm becomes for- a question somewhere along the way of like, who is allowed to use force? Yeah. And, you know, the idea, like, again, I'm, I'm sympathetic to the idea that if, if anybody's allowed to use force and you have to allow somebody to use force. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, that, I mean like for force is necessary to, at some point to, enforce yeah whatever kind of law situations that are yeah that have gotten out of control um whatever your you know the the law or morality or whatever it is like somewhere along the line force will have to be used to make sure that it it's abided by yeah um and the question becomes well who's allowed to use that force and so i i again i'm i'm i understand the idea that if anyone is allowed to use force it should be the government yeah. You know, as long as the government is of by and for the people, like like the ideal. Yeah. But it's not. <laughs> yeah, not even close at this at this stage of the game. Yeah, and, and so um, I don't know. This is a this is a big topic to get into already an hour into this. Well, podcast, I was gonna so say. I, I mean, like, we can do a whole podcast on law enforcement reform. Yeah, I don't want to spend another and half hour. Yeah, like it's and, it's gotten warm in this room, and I'm hungry and. <laughs> Well, yeah. and even beyond just privatize, I mean, privatize mm-hmm. would be the ultimate goal, but mm-hmm. there are things that could be done beyond that now yeah. to, to at least nudge us the right direction. Mm-hmm. Cause I know a lot, for a lot of people listening, I'm sure they're thinking, Oh, privatize like, Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and what I always say is that what you have here is, uh, a system that's set up where the same entity, um, creates the laws, enforces the laws, and interprets the laws. Yeah. And, like, you would never agree to a contract like that. Yeah. Where the same, like, where the other party to the contract... Makes all the calls. ...created the contract, interprets the contracts, and enforces the contract. Yeah. Um, and I had somebody, when I said that to, uh, actually, when I said that to my friend from college up in Tennessee, yeah. um, he was like, no, we agree to contracts like that all the time. I was like, no, we don't, because you can get an outside attorney. Like, I understand what you're talking about, that, you know, all these agreements that we make with software companies and so forth. Like, But yeah. the truth is, if there's a dispute, you don't have to use their attorney. Yeah, right. I mean, that's the kind of situation that we're talking about with, with government. Yeah. Now, you don't actually have to use their attorney, but... Um, 
the attorney that makes the decision is going to be paid by the government. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and that's true with these contracts with uh, software companies, too. Yeah. Their attorney is not making the decision. Neither is your attorney. It's a government attorney that's exactly. making the decision. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it's, it's not all controlled by the same group. Yeah. Um, so the only contract like that is your contracts with the government. Yeah. So. And those are inherently unjust. Yeah. I would say. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to think of an example where I'm wrong, but I can't come up with one right now. If you've got one, email it. <laughs> yeah, if you've got one, email me at Michael at the Liberty Mike, and uh, we expect to be back here next week. I'm going to go ahead and cut this off now before we <laughs> like, oh, yeah. really. Yeah, we're, I'm I'm closing. All right, so we're done. <laughs> yeah, I felt like we had a lot more to explore there. We, but... <laughs> we'll explore it on a future podcast. All right, fair enough. We yeah, actually, we explore it from time to time on podcasts all the way through. So <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, nah. we'll, we'll explore it on a future podcast. Not going to spend another half hour talking about uh, justice reform in the U.S. Or UBI. Or UBI. I mean, do you have more to say about UBI? I mean, I don't. I mean, I don't. Yeah. I mean, I don't really have any more to say about it. I kind of felt like you might, though. Well, I probably did, but then we got distracted. <laughs> um, and I, I, I'm trying to think of how to come back to it. I, I would say just like the bottom line for uh, for our breed of libertarian, for the anarcho-capitalist or anarchist libertarian. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the idea is that any, any kind of government subsidy, subsidization, man, subsidization, subsidization, <laughs> subsidization, um, of people is a, is a mistake yeah. is, is more government interference in the market than you want because yeah. any government interference in the market is more than you want. Yeah. Um, and so you are distorting the market by, uh, injecting this money in, you know, however it's distributed. Yeah. Um, a, a redistribution of wealth of any kind like that is, um, is a distortion of the market and, um, and it creates future problems. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, we're already knocking, I mean, 33 mm -hmm. trillion, like we're knocking on the door here. Like. Yeah. Um, and it also, it also just increases the power of government of, of a central government, which you don't want. Like yeah. decentralization is the key. Yeah. Like if you got a local, um, like, I, I mean, I guess I would have less problem, uh, with UBI on a more local level. Like, well, if every, you know, if, a, if a community has agreed on putting money into a pot and making sure that everybody has like some base level of income or whatever. Okay, fine. Yeah. Um, if you agree to that, doing it at a national level is ridiculous. And I know that they do some of that. Like, uh, I think Alaska has, um, a essentially UBI. a UBI, uh, related to the state controlled, uh, petroleum reserves or something. Yeah. Um, well, and that kind of brings me to the point I did kind of want to make mm -hmm. is, so I, it wouldn't bother me so much if government ran on a surplus. Like, oh, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like, I mean, if your government is running on the surplus, the best— You what, guys gave us too much money this year, so we're going to equally distribute it yeah, out, back out amongst you. That's that would, Like a dividend in, in yeah, a stock or something. Exactly. Yeah. I could get down with that. Like, okay, like, so— that that would make sense to me, but the fact that I mean that that's never going to happen for one. Um, but it, if beyond that, I just can't support it. Like I just, I it it just doesn't doesn't work for me. Yeah. One more small point on the, um, uh, I guess the reforms that they agreed on for the new speaker. Oh yeah. The they agreed to cap government spending at twenty twenty two levels. Yeah the highest spending year of government in the history of mankind. <laughs> until That's the, our cap. Until the next year. Okay. <laughs> well, generally, I think the idea is that you got to cap it somewhere, right? Yeah, it may as well pick the <laughs> highest spending year ever. Yeah, I mean, we're not going back to 1994. Like. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so. Okay, can I close it now? Yeah, you close it out, man. Okay, because <laughs> we're well over an hour now. All right. Um, all right. Well, uh, we will, uh, we plan. I, I hate to be definitive about any of this because we suck. Uh, <laughs> we didn't suck as bad this year as we did the year before. No, I, so. you're right. We, we lit, we're we sucking must less every it. year. So yeah, we're getting better and better at this. <laughs> yeah. It's getting better and better every year. Yep. We, we are more reliable every year. <laughs> you hope so as we're <laughs> in our forties and like, yeah. anyway, um, we plan to be back next week. Uh, and in the meantime, you can follow us on Facebook. You can subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, and or Podbean. 
Uh, like and share, comment, subscribe. Uh, you can leave reviews, and you can always email me at michael at thelibertymike.com. Blow it up. Yeah, may as well. I, I Yeah, may as well. Blow it up. Make, make me I, want, I want it to look like one of those comment threads I was in <laughs> yeah. the other day. I don't know that I want it to look like that. Um, yeah, you know, I, <laughs> I, was, uh, I was asked last night, like, do I check that email? And I said, of course, like, I got to keep track of my fan mail and my hate mail. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, so either one can be sent to me. I, yeah. uh, I read the fan mail. I trash the hate mail. So there you go. You know, just know you're wasting your time if you're hating. <laughs> and uh, we'll be back next week when we finally get this right. In the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. Mm-hmm.